Luxor and Aswan. Welcome back to details. Egypt has completely rejected Ethiopia's unilateral decision to start the second filling of its dam. Minister of Water Resources and Irrigation Mohamed Abdelati described the move as a flagrant and dangerous breach of the 2015 Declaration of Principles signed by the three countries. In a letter to Ethiopia's Minister of Water Resources, Minister Adil Abdelati said the measure is a violation of international norms and laws guiding the building of projects or of joint basins of international rivers, including the Nile. Meanwhile, Abdelati said Egypt is not against development in Ethiopia or other Nile Basin countries, but stressed the development projects must be in line with rules of international law and address concerns of downstream countries. Speaking during a video conference with the executive director of the UN Environment Programme, Inger Anderson, the minister reviewed the water situation in Egypt and challenges to water sector in the country, especially with limited resources available and the impact of climate change and unilateral Ethiopian measures over the filling and operation of the dam. He said Egypt has shown flexibility during the course of negotiations and the stubbornness of the Ethiopian side. For her part, Anderson expressed readiness by the UN to take part in the African Union's path aimed at supporting negotiations over the dam if Cairo, Khartoum and Addis Ababa were all called for such a move. The Foreign Ministry sent a letter to the UN Security Council detailing the latest developments to the Ethiopian dam file ahead of Thursday's session called to discuss the dam. In his letter, the ministry said Ethiopia's side move is a dangerous development that exposes its bad intentions and insistence on taking unilateral measures. According to the letter, the move proves Ethiopia's stand to enforce a status quo without reaching a deal that addresses interests of three countries and limits harm to the two downstream countries. Warning that the unilateral decision of the second filling of the dam would worsen the crisis, arouse more tension in the region and jeopardize international and regional peace security. Foreign Minister Semah Shukri called on the United Nations Security Council to shoulder its responsibility and act to reach a binding and just agreement about the filling and operation of the dam. The Foreign Minister remarks came during his meeting with representatives of Russia, China and the United Nations ahead of the United Nations Security Council session to discuss the Renaissance Dam filling issue on Thursday. During the meeting, the top diplomat expressed Egypt's firm stand towards the issue that is based on the necessity of reaching a legally binding agreement on the dam's filling and operation, taking into account the interests of the three countries and preserving Egypt's water rights. Shukri held another meeting with the Arab Committee concerned with the dam's filling, which includes Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Iraq and Morocco, plus the Arab League. He also held a meeting with the permanent members of the African Group of the UN Security Council, as well as representatives of Estonia, Ireland, Mexico, Norway, the non-permanent members of the Security Council over the Ethiopian Dam. Earlier, Shukli met with Tunisian permanent representative to the UN, as Tunisia is the current Arab representative in the Security Council. At their meeting in New York, the Egyptian and Sudanese foreign ministers said firmly rejected Ethiopia's unilateral move of the second filling of the dam, saying the step contradicts the Declaration of Principles and goes against international and law guarding the use of border river resources. The top diplomat warned that its move is dangerous, provoking that provo is a dangerous provocation, other saying that proves Ethiopia's bad intentions and adamancy to force a status quo on the two downstream countries, indifferent to inflicted negative impact. They agreed to continue discussions with UN Security Council members to gain support for the call by Cairo and Khartoum to reach a legally binding agreement over the dam's filling and operation. The two ministers further discussed the stressed rather the necessity that the deal addresses interests of the three countries and preserves the water rights of the two downstream nations. <coughs> Ahead of the United Nations Security Council session on Ethiopia's dam filling, 
the Speaker of the Arab Parliament, Abdel Adil Abdel Rahman Al Asumi urged the UN Security Council to act to reach a binding and just agreement about the filling and operation of the dam. Al Asumi said the Arab Parliament is acting according with international law and norms that govern transboundary rivers such as Nile, which is jointly owned by countries on its banks. He said that move by one party to have full control over the river are totally unacceptable, as well as its attempt to impose new facts on the ground to help upstream countries control their downstream neighbors. Prime Minister Mustafa Mabouli arrived in Aswan on Tuesday to check on a number of projects and facilities in Luxor and Aswan. During his tour of renovation works at Al Kabesh Road, Mabouli stressed that the state bodies are exerting their utmost efforts to revive historical areas and archaeological sites with the aim of maintaining Egypt's heritage and treasures that are reflecting its long-standing civilization over ages. He said the renovation of Kabesh Road aims at turning Luxor into an open museum linking Karnak Temple to Luxor Temple. El Kabesh Road will be inaugurated in a big ceremony as part of the state's national project to revive the historical and archaeological sites nationwide.